What's up, y'all? I'm Andy, the Zepius Garage. I'm going to show you something today that's probably overdue. I probably should have done this as one of my first videos. Are you thinking of buying a table saw, but you're a little intimidated? Then by watching this video, you're already on the right track. A table saw can be perfectly safe if you follow a few safety rules and don't get complacent. You can get hurt just as bad with a hand tool as you can with a table saw, if you're not careful. Today, I'm going to show you some basic table saw safety, and I'll show you a little bit about my saw and some easy to make jigs that help you stay safe and make your work a little bit easier. Please remember, if you like the video, to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want future notifications for future videos, then remember to ring that bell. And please remember to comment if you have any tips of your own with the table saw or any feedback on the video. Hey, real quick, I want to thank 1416 Designs for making me this awesome tumbler. They make some cool stuff, y'all, and sell designs you can buy to print your own stuff. I'll go ahead and link them in the description below. Go check them out and tell them I said hi. Thanks. Let's first talk about safety. Should be number one when dealing with any tool in the garage, in your shop, wherever you are. First thing, eye protection. Wear some type of eye protection. Also, hearing protection. Protect your hearing. I see some people wearing gloves on table saws. Not my preferred thing to do. If that gets hung up on something or it grabs that, that could be the difference between being cut or your hand totally mauled. So my personal opinion, leave the gloves off when you're dealing with table saw and any rotating tool. There's a couple main things you need to worry about when working with your table saw. One is kickback. It's the most common thing that can happen. Kickback is where you're making a cut, the board gets twisted and binds between the fence and the blade. The back side of the blade will catch the board and shoot that board out really fast. I'm going to show you how to avoid that. It's pretty simple. And then the other one, of course, is getting cut. Getting cut, keep your hands away from the blade. You don't have to worry about getting cut. All right, so better explain what kickback is. Kickback, make sure my saw is unplugged. Kickback is you're making a cut, and this is blade is moving this way, and your board binds towards the blade, and the tooth will grab this board and shoot it out really fast. If you're standing in the way right here cutting, it's going to come back and hit you in the stomach. There are a couple simple ways to make sure you avoid kickback. One, riving knife. Always, always make sure you have your riving knife in anytime you're cutting. This is an automatic. The next feature is your anti-kickback paw. This simply snaps onto the saw like that. And as you're cutting, the paw will lift up and these teeth will grab the board and only allow you to go that way keeping the board from pulling out. This is good to have, I'll be honest, I don't use it much. I just make sure that I'm making correct cuts. This is a good feature to have. If you're new to the table saw, I definitely recommend always using your anti-kickback paw. Another way you want to avoid kickback is when you're making cross cuts. It'd be easy to do. Set your distance that you want your cross cut up against your fence. Butt it up against there and make your cut. However, that's a bad idea. The reason why is as you cut this board, you're leaving no space here for the cut. What you want to do is apply some type of buffer board. Measure your distance between your blade and your board. Get your distance you want. Rockler and some other places make these little clamps. Put your clamp on. Now, when you make your cut, you're going to butt it against this board. You're going to go through and you have space here. So the board will just fall off. It won't be bound between the blade and the fence. I hope that makes sense. Before you make your cut, you want to make sure your blade height is set correctly. There is no reason your blade height should be set this high when you're cutting something this thick. Instead, lower your blade height 
I do it about half the length of the tooth from where the carbide starts, about there. Now you have a lot less blade to worry about running your hand across. I'm going to be 100% honest with you on this one. This guard that came with my saw, I've never used. I haven't felt the need and it gets in the way of so many cuts. It just gets in, in my way. If you're new to the table saw and makes you feel comfortable, I highly recommend using it. If you've been using it for a long time and it gets in your way as well and you feel it's more of a danger to have it, then don't use it. But make sure you're careful hand placement all the time. Let's talk about some of the simple jigs I've made really quick. This one is a quick, I guess you call it like a tenon jig, jig to get a steeper angle. I had to build this to make my flag holder video a while back. I'll link it in the description, but I make a flag holder, like a ceremonial flag holder. And it required some pretty steep cuts that table saw couldn't do. So I had to create this. Basically sets on there, you run it through. This is a spline jig. I use this to make splines and picture frames and other 45 or 90 degree angle items that I make. And this last little jig, I don't know what you would call it, maybe a stabilizing jig. I made this when I did my beehive. I had some wide boards that I needed to cut rabbits on and I went ahead and used my table saw. So what I did is I made this little jig here so I could put pressure on it, keeps my hand on the other side of the blade and I can run it through. Let's talk about the miter gauge. This Delta saw came with a fairly decent miter gauge. I've used it now for several years. It's worked fine. I would li like to get maybe one of those uh, more expensive $200 gauges. I think they're the Incras. Uh, they look like they would be really cool. I don't know if I'm ready to spend the money on that. So I've been using this. Uh, these you can put up a sacrificial board on. I recommend that. You can make it any link you want. You can move it and you just screw it in through the back. This also gives you all your different degrees you want to set it up to. And that's it. When using your table saw, you're going to need things to push your items through. There's one that's really expensive called the gripper. I've never used it, but maybe if somebody ever sends me one for free, I might. But they're pretty expensive. On Amazon, though, I did find these. They work really well. One is a straight handle. One is a curved handle. So you kind of aim it away from the blade. And then, of course, I always make... When I got some scrap three quarter inch lumber, I make one of these triangles with a handle and on the end, I put a little catch to catch the wood. And this works really well to run it through. One thing I see a lot of people using, and I personally don't like it, is just a stick. If you have this stick and you're running it through and you're holding it right here, there is nothing putting pressure on the end of the board. That blade could grab that, flip it up, and back onto you. I don't like the sticks at all, and I don't recommend using them. But if you are gonna use a stick, I suggest using two. So you're gonna push with one and kinda of hold it down with the other and run it through. That You don't wanna just do it with one stick. You're asking for trouble. You just might mind. be wondering what table saw I have and what I use. I have the Delta T1 table saw. 13 amp 3600 rpm it will take a dado stack uh, it has some wheels where i can move it around in my shop my garage which works well so as you know if you've seen the video i work out of a small garage to share it with a, the wife's car they do not make the t1 anymore i don't believe they might don't quote me on this but now i think they make the t2 it's an upgraded version i'm not sure what those upgrades are I know they're slightly different color and they changed a few things on them. I'm not really sure. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Rigid may have bought Delta or Delta bought Rigid one of the two. And Rigid has a saw that's, and it's almost a clone of the T1, T2. So if you're interested in table saws, I'd look at those. They also make uh, contractor saws that are small. You can put in the bed of your truck, whatever you want to do. I've seen people build really cool, like, roll around desks or uh, I don't know what you call them cabinets tabletops tables 
where they set in that and you got a big surface area. There's nothing wrong with that. Those work well, I'm sure. I really do like mine and it's been a great investment. I've already paid for it with all the projects I've made and, and sold. Things you need to look for. Will it take a dado stack? If you're thinking about using dado stacks, I highly recommend that you make get one that will take one. And then the fence. This The fence, if it moves around on you when you clamp it down, it's trash. I, I mean, the saw may be trash, fence may be trash. One of them is trash or both. I originally bought a coal bolt that folded up, went up against the wall real nice and small. However, the fence would not lock down at all. It was a pile of trash. I took it back within three or four days. I traded it in and I spent a few hundred dollars more on this and I'm so glad I did. I manage dust collection on this is I just take my regular Craftsman vacuum and I hook it up to the saw. And adjusting your blade to make a bevel cut, the, the gauge on the saw is never accurate. I don't know if they just slapped that thing on there or what. I highly recommend getting a digital angle finder or using some type of protractor that's accurate. It's saved me a lot of trouble. I'll link the protractor or digital angle finder that I use. It works great. That's all I got for today. I really hope that this helps someone out there. Just remember to respect the tool and don't ever get complacent. Complacency can kill. If you're about to make a cut and it doesn't feel right, stop what you're doing and reevaluate the cut. Maybe you need to make a practice cut with the saw turned off, run the board through, make sure it's going to work out for you. I often cut my lumber to a rough size using a skill saw and then I bring it over to the table saw when it's more manageable and I cut it to its actual size. That helps with me. Please stay safe and have fun y'all. I'll see you next time. Andy out.